Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, Huriwa, has asked the Nigeria Center for Disease Control to trace and place on quarantine for 14 days every one of the crowd that witnessed the late funeral ride of Chief of Staff to the President, Abia Kari. Huriwa, in a statement sent by its national coordinator, Comrade Emmanuel Ongbiko, stated that the same government official in the person of the President's senior special assistant and media, Gada Bashew, who announced that the burial of the late chief of staff would be solemn and strictly private, was cited on live television in Gudu Abuja in what appeared to be a carnival atmosphere. Huriwa noted that the manners who turned up failed to observe the social distancing rule with some of these persons not putting on their face mask appropriately. Huriwa also capitated the secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, who was also at the defense house in Maytama, with a lot of manners who turned up to accompany the remains to its final resting place. Now, joining us via telephone is the CEO, VB Pharmacy Limited. Olu Bemiga Ogunlega. Thank you very much for joining us. Morning. Uh, thank you for joining us on the news. Pleasure to be speaking with you. So, could you tell us uh, your reaction to that video uh, that is causing a whole lot of noise on the internet? Uh, well, simply put, certain guidelines were neglected as stated by NCDC in the handling or management of the dead body. And there's a need for respect and rights to be given to uh, a loved one. However, there were certain guidelines that were neglected which could put people at risk. I mean, you had people there at the site without the protective tool, no, no masks, no, no gloves, or you had people that were actually uh, touching the body and next thing touching their there are spectacles, you know, removing gloves and stuff at the site, which is already a, a foci for transmission of the virus and the like. So safety precautions need to be adhered to, and it's for a reason. These need to be adhered to. It's not, a, it's not, a, it's not to be treated with kids' gloves at all. Uh, now, now that it seems like it is the government officials that are flouting the social distancing order as well as the other PPEs, um, who will reprimand and punish who? Sir, could you take that again? I'm talking about the fact that it's, it seems it's the government officials who are pulling out the rule that are now flouting the social distancing order um, as well as the use of PPEs. I'm asking, who will reprimand who and who will punish who? Who in this scenario? Well, actually, right. Um, first, leadership is by example. Uh, I want to believe, first and foremost, that the officials they enforce should have led by example. There's a need to congregate. However, there's already a standard that a certain number of people should not congregate in a place. And if for any reason, they should apply the social distancing rule such that there's, an, there's a measurable distance between people to avoid the transmission of the virus. Uh, and that's the essence of doing that. Now, having not taken that leadership stance by actually implementing the social distancing rule negates everything in place. And definitely, if you're not leading by example, how do you actually meet out punishment as it were to offenders? Basically, tell you that the NCDC can locate everyone as promised that was at the burial. Sorry, what did you say, please? I said, how confident are you that the government and the NCDC can locate everyone um, at the burial as they promised? Well, I'd like to say this. Um, I'd like to give kudos to NCDC. Really, they are doing the best they can and putting efforts. Um, there still remains certain hindrances to them effectively taking on uh, the testing, as it were, for the general populace. They plan basically to do this in phases, which I believe is possible if there's a cooperation 
early detection, uh, proper contact tracing, and um, due adherence to guidelines being given, it is still very possible. It's a cooperation between the bodies that want to provide the service and the people who are suspected of being positive, adhering to the treatment guidelines and also the health guidelines put in place by NCDC, social distancing, washing of hands, uh, use of sanitizers, and general health practices that are to the benefit of population. It could help. All right, what, what should be the protocol going forward for disposal of these bodies going to stay in line with international standards? So could you take that again? As a, what should be the protocol going forward for disposal of bodies of those who die from COVID-19 that will be in, in tune with international standards? Okay. One, there is a standard practice that has been uh, put in place, basically, which needs to be adhered to, which is all individuals who are to participate in uh, burials, basically, should wear protective clothing and only those that have been trained for it. Because one, they would have protective gear, the PPEs, the face masks, the gloves, and definitely the seat on which the body will be handled. On no account should anyone without protective clothing be directly involved with the burial procedures. Two, in the event that you have people congregate around a burial site, they should adhere to the social distancing rule and also ensure that the necessary hygienic practices with the use of 70% uh, ethanol for washing and then 0.5% chlorine should be adopted to further seal off any opportunities for uh, the virus to thrive in that environment post the burial. These are important to avoid the spread of the virus. I want to say thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you very much, Ms. Christopher.